Yo what's good everyone, we get to choose our free standard 5 star soon and I did a video discussing Dia that people enjoyed. Mona has a massive hat so people are considering choosing her. She's a good pick too cause she's not as niche as you might think. Let's look at how she's improved since release and also how she synergizes with some of the new Natlan units. Before we get into it, I want to give a disclaimer that I don't believe any of the 5 stars in the standard pool are the best at what they generally do. I think there are better Dendro DPSs than Tignari, better Electro DPSs than Kirching, better healers than Jean, although Jean is a really good choice for Farina teams. Mona is the same, there are better options, Farina being one of them. But there are situations where Mona isn't a massive downgrade, there are even situations where you'd prefer Mona. At the end of the day, Farina isn't available in the selection pool and Mona is, so the comparisons have limited value. We're here to decide whether it's worth choosing Mona or not. Let's get into it. Very briefly, we'll talk about what exactly it is that she does just so we can be better informed in building teams for her. Her entire purpose is to use a burst which puts a mark on the enemy. This mark is called an omen. At talent level 10, it makes attacks against enemies marked by the omen deal 60% more damage. The omen only lasts 5 seconds though, very stingy which is in character for her. Very British. The skill drops a taunt which attracts enemies and applies hydro, and while it's not great, it does make it slightly easier for you to make use of that 5 second window without having to dodge. To get the most out of Mona, you want characters that deal front loaded damage. What this means is during your entire rotation, they deal most of their damage at the start of the rotation. At launch there weren't too many characters that deal front loaded damage, but now there are a few. We'll start with these front loaded characters then we'll talk about some more ways to use Mona including the teams people used before the addition of these front loaded characters, as well as how she benefits new units like Mualani and Kinnich. So Navia is the queen of front loaded damage. You can pop a burst, a skill, some normals and a skill again all in that 5 second window. Pairing her with other strong units like Yolan and Chiori will mean that even after Mona's omen expires you'll still be dealing big damage. To those like myself who don't have Chiori, you can use Albedo instead, or if you don't have him, we're getting a free copy of Kachina in 5.0. I did a guide on her, but basically she'll apply Geo off-field and she can hold the new artifact set, Scroll of a Hero. This gives Navia 40% Geo damage and Yolan 40% Hydro damage. Mona being Hydro gives Yolan more HP from the Hydro Resonance too, which is nice. Mualani also works in this team if you swap Yolan out. Her vape teams will be stronger, but if you wanted something different, she deals big front loaded damage with a burst and a skill. If you're quick enough, you might even be able to throw a Navia skill or two in there before switching to Mualani, then you can let Navia's skill cool down during Mualani's field time. Navia isn't the only character who works with Mona though. Arlequino is a solid choice and you can play her with Mona in two ways. The first way is to set up Arlequino's skill and the rest of your rotation. Pop Mona's burst, then when you switch back to Arlequino with Pyro infused normals, you're going to deal more damage for 5 seconds. The second way would be to use Mona's burst, then use Arlequino's Alakino's burst for a big damage vape. The downside to that second wave though is using Alakino's burst will consume a bond of life. It's a satisfying way to end the last chamber of your abyss run, or if you're doing a damage showcase for a big number, but I don't recommend it for the rest because it can mess up your rotations. Looking at another unit in the standard pool, Dia benefits from Mona. Let's say you're running Dia, Emily and Bennett. For the last slot you can bring Shang Ling to get an extra source of damage. Farina wouldn't be a bad choice in that slot either with her being able to vape without removing the pyro aura. Kazuo will drive Dia's damage higher too. If you don't have him though, Mona is a nice alternative. With Dia's burst only lasting 4 seconds, she's going to be able to make full use of the omen. And with there being so much pyro in the team, you might find that Mona herself deals a bit of vape damage. 4 piece emblem would help her get her burst back quicker while also buffing it. During the rotation's downtime, you can safely funnel particles from Bennett to Dia without losing much damage, cause Emily's in the background fighting the good fight. Looking towards Natlan again, how about Kinnich? Spinach wants a pyro applicator. Let's say that's Bennett to give him more attack. Emily will help maintain the burning aura, but who do you use in the last slot? Shang Ling is an extra source of damage but it's not going to be as much as usual with her not vaping. You might be tempted to say Kazuha because he's a crutch so many people lean on, but who's he benefiting here by buffing Pyro? DPS off field Bennett. Now Mona slots in well because, like the last scene we talked about, she can vape for big damage herself without removing the burning aura, she can hold thrilling tails to give spinach even more attack, but there's also another big benefit. If they release a Natlan Pyro unit to replace Bennett in this team,
team, which realistically they probably will, Mona will be able to cover a lot of his support you lose by dropping Bennett. Ito benefits from Mona too. When building Ito teams, you'll go Goro for defense and geo damage, a third geo unit like Chiori or Albedo because Goro buffs more when there are three geo members in the party. And then we're in need of a flex. Farine is amazing, but she drains the team's HP, and with Goro C4 being your only source of healing, and it only heals the on fielder, Farina can cause issues here. Mona is a near perfect solution. After a burst, you can use Ito's skill, then his charge attacks, and by the time the omen's gone, you'll have consumed all his charge attacks anyway, so you'll have made good use of it. You can even give Mona Favonius Codex for energy if you're struggling, or Prototype Amber for more healing. If you're feeling like a saucy little danger fiend, you might even drop your Albedo or Chiori for Farina, and with it, you get the Hydro Resonance to buff Farina's HP. Then Prototype Amber can keep the team alive. Can't be that bad, right? Right? Okay, so we talked about a synergy with Navia, Mulani, Alikino, Dia, Kinnich for Spinach, and Ito. That's gotta be it, right? Wrong. Just like British people in real life, she just won't go away. It can get cold in England, so out of respect for Queen Elizabeth, pour one out for our dead homie, let's look at Freeze. These days, the Abyss is full of enemies that can't be frozen, so people don't often run Freeze anymore, but back in the days of Big Lizzie, people run Mona in a team called Morgana. Inspired by a League of Legends character who would freeze things in an AoE, Mona would apply Hydro to do the same with characters like Ganyu or Ayaka. Venti was the Animo character of choice, but I didn't pull him because I didn't like his massive socks or tights or whatever they are, so I use Kazuha. Layla is also a student of astronomy so she can save the last slot and it also means not only do you not have to run Diona, you can give a 4 piece tenacity for more attack for the team. Ok so we've discussed how she's been buffed since her release and along the way we've looked at her teams. Now let's talk about how you should build her. In terms of weapons she has several you would choose from depending on circumstance. For Tails if you want to give a character you're switching into more attack, Prototype Amber for more team healing, for Thonius Codex if you want to give a team energy. In experimental electro teams where she's a driver you could even give her Hakushin rings to give a team 20% electro and 20% hydro damage. Let's talk about artifacts. The main two sets people use on it are 4 piece Noblesse to give a team attack and 4 piece Instructor to give a team elemental mastery. With the release of Natlan we're about to get the new support set Scroll of a Hero and Mona's going to hold that really well. When she triggers a reaction all characters will get a 12% elemental damage buff of the elements involved in a reaction. I think that's going to give more value to the team than the Blessing Instructor, so if you do pick Mona, keep that in mind. There is also the option to go 4 piece emblem, as I mentioned earlier, for more personal damage, but I always recommend support sets on her. Finally, let's touch on constellations, because the value to you is your anniversary pick will vary depending on how many constellations you have. A C1 gives extra electro charged hydro swell and vape damage to the team when hitting an enemy map by a Roman. This is a nice one mainly for the vape damage, and unlike the Omen, this buff lasts 8 seconds rather than 5. A lot of people consider her C4 to be a best constellation. It gives 15% crit rate to all team members when hitting enemies marked by a Roman. If you don't have Mona or you're a constellation away from one of these two, I'd consider her as your pick. Overall, if we're being honest, Mona isn't best in slot for many, if any, characters, and there are popular characters like Farina who will be better in almost every team you play her in. But she is flexible. In game modes like Imaginarium Theatre, it's nice to have a character you can drop in there to pad your team out while contributing through a burst, artifact, set and weapon. Just being a catalyst gives her a lot of weapon options, and she can hold a lot of support artifacts too. Hopefully in that line we get even more characters with front loaded damage to synergize with her. I did a similar guide for Dia a couple days ago and I'm going to drop more before Natlan. Subscribe if you want to see those, and take it easy.